I'm hungry. DJ may have a handle on it, but he will never ever get the full scoop. Gosen brings to China and America these preserved duck eggs. These products are also known as century eggs. Through no amount of refrigeration, these eggs are buried and preserved in a mixture of clay, ash, salt, quicklime, and rice for an average of 100 days, resulting in a color, flavor, and texture all natural. When I first started this show, I made the affidavit that anything is on the table, provided that A, it is not alive, and B, it is not poisonous. And I like to try to stay true to my word. And in knowing that, there were two things that I was hoping that I would never see on this show. Two things that I hoped never to see come sliding across my table. One of which was the one chip challenge, and even though that was torture, I was able to get through it and it turned out to be a pretty okay episode. And now, I've come face to face with the set. Hello? Is this us? Speaking? I heard you. A wrinkle? Uh, I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. I'm sure you've noticed the dude's having issues with his lighting. Your suit is custom lit to match its current surroundings. If the light changes in any way, you'll be spotted unless you can regulate. Okay? If the lights go out, take the switch, turn it down to, um, about a 50, 55, somewhere in that range. I don't know exactly. I can't tell you offhand. Just, just try to look at your hands and see if they match the outside, all right? Uh, all right, all right! Now quit dilly-dallying and get it done! hell's he talking about? Regulate? I don't see Nate, Dog, and Warren G anywhere! You probably want to know A, what this is, and B, how I know what this is. Well, we'll start with A. These are soy sauce soaked Japanese style aged hard boiled eggs. Now, let's just say for the sake of argument, you leave a hard boiled egg out on the counter somewhere to let nature take its course. How long do you think it's going to be before that thing starts to rot? How long do you think it's going to be before that thing starts to give off an odor? I'd say maybe a couple of hours. <laughs> because when it comes to rotting, the egg is the grand champion of food now, isn't it? There's a good reason why rotten egg is such an easy go-to whenever you want to describe something that smells foul. Because eggs have a tendency to spoil and spoil quickly. And when they do, they irradiate their surroundings like a sulfur mine. Let me tell you about what they did. Someone, somewhere in Japan, hard boiled a duck egg and didn't refrigerate it. They just soaked it in all sorts of salt and soy sauce to kind of sort of preserve it and then proceeded to bury it in ash and clay where it would stay semi-cool underground. For months, they would then dig it out, and you'll notice the shells have adapted to match the color of their surroundings, resembling a kind of metallic gray color, almost like looking like clay themselves. As for the yolk inside, it proceeds to turn a sickly greenish black in color. They are aged to imperfection! And you would 
probably think this is one of those rich delicacies that I talked about in the caviar episode, something that only uppity rich Japanese folk would be able to afford to eat. Well, no, it isn't. In fact, it's not even that weird over there. It's pretty common. So I'm sure you really want to know how I know about this. I mean, my knowledge of weird food only goes so far. Well, I would bet anything, those of you watching who do know what this is, found out about it the very same way that I did. We're anime fans, right? So we all watch the same thing, Gudetama! The story about a lonely little egg that wants to try to find its way back home. While there was one really detailed part of that miniseries where our egg hero encountered one of these duck eggs and it was like a zombie coming out of the earth, and the whole time I'm watching, I'm silently wretched myself. The whole process just seemed so unnatural, so poisonous, and never did I dream that this would show up on the program someday. But like I said, they're more common than you think. So it was only a matter of time. Damn it! This is becoming an issue. Look at the picture on this carton. I think we'll all agree that this is pretty rancid as fact and not opinion. But it can't actually be disgusting. There's got to be a reason why this is a delicacy in Japan. And just as an aside, I'm kind of sort of new to this YouTube thing. I mean, I've been on the service for close to 16 years now. You'd think I would know everything there is to know, but I'm still figuring out things as I go, and I hear now there's a way to put out polls on your YouTube page, like you can have your viewers vote on things. And given recent events, I gotta know. I just have to know what the public opinion is on what is the weirder adventure to embark upon. I give to you Exhibit A, the aged duck egg. What persuaded some guy to just take his hard-boiled egg, bury it underground, leave it there for months, unearth it and eat it, and think that it would make it taste better? Can I give to you Exhibit P? Mr. Requests. Who is the guy out there alive who beat this game the legit way, without a strategy guide, without knowing what he was doing, just doing it by ear? After he beat it that third time, what made him, what persuaded him to go on and beat it a fourth? And hey, both situations had positive outcomes but both were headed into a dark black hole the whole time. So I ask you all, vote! Speaking of black holes... Thousands of lives will be die. It's funny, but I'm actually witnessing this right before my eyes changing forms. It's almost becoming more of a gelatin substance. I guess it's kind of the same way like when you unearth a mummy, like when you take the bandages off a mummy and you might see like the skin kind of looks preserved, but the second the outside air and all the elements hit it, it just kind of goes and like squishes into itself. The same basic principle. And you're probably wondering if it has a smell. Yes, it definitely has a smell, a rather pungent one, I may add. But is it the smell of rotten eggs? No, and as a matter of fact, I've never smelled a smell like this in my life. If I were to compare it to anything, you ever get into an accident with your car and you have to take it to a body shop the way that it comes back to you, it has that weird smell of new metal? There's something very metallic about it. And as I look down at this, many things are going through my mind, if I may share a couple from you. For one, the yolks. The yolks look like a moldy old kiwi fruit or maybe like the worst poop that you've ever had. Like whenever your poop kind of had like a twinge of green in it. It's got this sickening, not quite green, not quite gray, not quite brown color. If I may show this to you close up. And every time I pick the thing up, it leaves smears of green everywhere that I see. And as for the egg whites, everybody, I ask you to join me in a moment of silence for any white that was ever present in this egg. Amen. What can I say? It's like the color of beer, and it's translucent. It's very strange how gelatinous it is. You can see almost right through it. If I were to compare it to anything, 
Does anybody out there remember super elastic bubble plastic? It was this tube of liquid you'd be able to buy it at Toys R Us and it would usually be one of the first things that you saw when you walked through the door there. You'd stuck this tiny little straw in it and you'd, go, you'd blow tiny little breaths into it and it would turn this gigantic bubble, like a bubble like literally this size out of a tube that was this size. And the thing about it was that it was a strange metallic weird color that was actually all the colors all mixed into one. Same basic thing here. It looks black, but it's actually shades of like yellow and brown and green in it as well. And I really hope I didn't shoot myself in the foot by talking so much after I already cracked this thing open. Hopefully it didn't spoil right there in the time it was taking me to say all of that. But I got a nice healthy bit of yolk in this bite. So everybody, please wish me luck. Manga! That's Japanese for manja. It tastes like rot! Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's not right. I do not understand how this is edible. I do not understand how this is acceptable. Because... You ever eat some, like, accidentally eat some moldy food? This tastes like there's nothing left of it. It's just all mold! It's just that weird, uneasy, like, sandy, powdery kind of feeling in your mouth. I mean, it's unlike an egg in that it just completely melts and just turns into goo, and it's just... The second it hits your tongue, it just turns into cream. And they say these kind of eggs, on average, are underground for about a hundred days, so... It's not that long. They call them century eggs. Which, that would lead you to believe they're, they're much more dangerous, but... I have a feeling that you eat this thing, it'll be good for, I mean, I won't say it's good for you. The, the, the most surprising thing is I don't taste any of the salt. I don't, see, I don't taste any of the preservatives. I would have thought that this would have been like nuked with all sorts of other ingredients to keep it fresh for as long as they dip. But no, all you taste is the egg or what was once an egg. I'm looking down at the plate and it's just like, my mind is just firing off blanks, just what the hell it's looking at. I'm looking at things that look like brown jello. This doesn't look like an egg anymore. And the longer I sit here, the more this place is starting to smell like light filament. Ugh. Oh my God. One thing I do have to give it credit for is the novelty of it. I mean, you wouldn't think that something like this would be able to be eaten. I hope I'm not eating these words later. I hope I'm not sticking my head in the toilet and just barfing my guts out. Maybe I should stop eating this because I don't know what the after effects are going to be. But they insist that it's safe. So if I were to give this a star rating, man, I got to stop. Oh, got to cleanse my palate. years, I don't think a single food has ever done this. It has dominated my palate. It's making everything else taste disgusting. Ugh, this is the worst Coke I've ever had. Anyway, I interrupted myself. It does have a certain degree of novelty to it. So if I were to give this a star rating, I'll be lenient. I'll give it one star. It didn't make me vomit. So if I were to sum up this whole experience in some clever kind of anecdote, I say that this product right here is just like Captain America Civil War. You know the very beginning of that movie, Brock Rumlow runs out into the crowd, he's like a suicide bomber, he starts to explode, and Scarlet Witch like encloses the explosion inside a tiny bowl, and he's like cooking from the inside, just trying to protect everybody? Well, something very similar is happening here. There is a strong taste of rot within this egg, and something is in there trying to protect you from it. Just think about it. If you were to put an egg this spoiled, they say on average, a hundred days spoiled in your mouth, what do you think would happen? Your body would reject it. You would probably projectile vomit it out of yourself the second that it hit your gastric juice. But that doesn't happen. You can actually put this in your mouth. And as you chew it, it tastes like an egg, mostly. And it kind of turns into goo the second that it touches your tongue. It turns into, like, if you could mix soup and Play-Doh, that's what it would turn into in your mouth. So that's happening, and at the same time, 
there's a taste. You can taste it way, way in the background, and that taste is something unpleasant. The only thing I can think of that that taste might be is rot or mold. But there's some kind of weird technique that they infused into this egg that is protecting you, shielding you from that disgust. You can taste it, but it's been dulled. It's always there in the background, prodding you, threatening you. But your own taste buds are shielding you from it. It's like it's locked in the cage, but that's, that's not preventing it from snarling. And there are a lot of caveats to eating something like this. I mean, maybe if I had some strong ginger here, like they offer in a lot of Japanese restaurants, I would be able to save my palate a little bit, but as it is, this like completely nukes your mouth. It overtakes everything that you're going to taste for that evening. So this better be the only thing that you have for dinner. Like you, the correct way to eat this is to have like a nice round table, have a whole bunch of your friends surrounding that table, a pile of these eggs are in the center. Nothing else to eat, nothing else to drink. And this is a weird way to end an episode, I know, but just like the one chip challenge before it, I can still feel this thing. It is nested, curled up right around here, like a tiny little baby alien just intermingling with my innards, having an adverse reaction on them. If this episode ends here, then bravo. This egg gets to keep its one star rating. But if I have to add like a tiny little tidbit after the end credits, if I have to explain that after I stopped filming here today, I started projectile vomiting and violently diarrheaing, then I'm gonna have to take some points away. But hopefully that won't happen. But looking at this item here today, looking at the aftermath of what I've eaten here, I kind of expect it. This is your buddy DJ Clive. Gotta go back up. Say, until next time, I'll see you in limbo. I'm gonna put this in a plastic bag and tie it off. Maybe I should put it in a metal box and lock it. <laughs>